How, let's see, Tat, how, how do you say, Tat Shino? Yeah. We're here with Tat Shino. She's one of the artists here for Artist Preview Night here at Laguna's Festival of the Arts. Right. Yes, and Tat, you've been, I mean, we feel quite privileged because one of your pictures right here is on the shirt for the Festival of the Arts. Yes, for this year. So, uh, I was very pleased when they selected it, and they, they're using it now for a t-shirt and also on some mugs. Now, that's a pretty big deal. What do you think about that honor? Very, very wonderful, because uh, this is the first time it's happened. They have selected a painting oh, a few years ago for their stationery uh, that has koi on it. I don't know if they still have it because it's been several years. Well, I remembered your artwork from last year, which I absolutely loved last year, uh -huh. and I still love it again this year. In fact, I probably appreciate it more this year. Well, that's interesting. I never put the same one up, so they're all very different. And this is my 22nd year. 22 years? Uh -huh. Are you old enough to do exhibit here 22 years? Right, uh-huh. <laughs> and I don't know if you know it, but I'll turn 92 uh, next month. Well, every year that you are here, we appreciate you. Well, thank you. Uh, now, let me know where I can see uh, here what you uh, produce. We will. We'll send you an email. Now, on your, on your artwork right here, because on your artwork, it's, you painted, is it watercolors? Yeah, watercolors. They're transparent watercolor. It always looks so real. So what's the secret in making it look transparent? Okay, uh, I, I don't use watercolor paper. My background is Chinese brush painting. And Chinese brush painting paints on rice paper. It's like a blotter. Rice paper, I mean, the watercolor paper runs the, the colors. So I had to find a heavier... Uh, acid-free paper, so I experimented with a lot of them. Primarily, I find that what they use for print making works out very well, and also I use rolled paper so I can get as big a size as I want. And so it's all self-developed. I've lost the Chinese technique because I I enjoyed it, but they paint generically. Right. And I found that I wanted to paint that particular flower instead of generically. And then uh, try to capture its magic that caught my attention in the first place. What I call bringing it alive. So uh, I challenge myself, and that's why I range in so many subjects here, is because each one is a new challenge. I have no set technique with which I approach a painting like a Chinese brush painting. Everyone has their own personality and their own technique. So, I'm always learning. So You are, and I love your pictures because there's one thing about it, they always look real. You also use a technique in watercolor that I have never seen anywhere no. else except no, by you. Because what I can do is I can layer, for you cannot layer on watercolor paper. If you layer, the bottom color comes up. And so I've gotten to the point where even uh, art, uh, art teachers come and say, how do you achieve it? Or, or it's come, it, it, it can't be watercolor, you see. But I love, the, I love watercolor. There's more aliveness than oil or acrylic. Oil and acrylic kind of is heavy. But I can get the light coming out of so I surprise myself each time. I really do, because that's the object. I'm my own judge, you see. And until I feel that I brought that painting alive, you'll never see it. Now, Tat, with your original technique that we don't see anywhere else, are you teaching people? No, because I don't have anything that's saying, this is what you do to achieve that. Because everything that I tackle has something different than what I painted the time before. So you are, are an artist that actually feels what to do. It's something yeah. that you can't, yes? I, and a lot of it has to do of seeing if I can get it on that piece of paper, you see. And then so there's only one of a kind, and, and even making prints don't make excite me because the prints really can't capture that subtle quality of, of what I capture in my paintings. Now, Tad, where can people see your artwork? Yeah, uh, your yeah I have a 
studio gallery that they can come see by appointment. Okay, it's a studio yeah. gallery in Newport yeah, Beach. Contact me, email, because I have a hearing problem. Okay. And telephone and I, we don't get along very well. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you want us to put your, your Hotmail address on there? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. Hot, uh, yeah, that's uh, Hotmail.com. Hotmail okay, it's Tat Shino. It's T-A-T-S-H-I-N-N-O at Hotmail.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that, and then that way, then I don't make a mistake on the name or address or telephone number or on the phone. It's very difficult. Uh huh. I, I watch the sound. I don't listen to it. You too? Yeah. Yeah. Well, even though I've got the special phone uh, that California put, I still have trouble because people talk too fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. So. So to see Tad and her artwork, just contact her, and you will be in for a treat that you will never see in other watercolors. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Tad. Yeah, I'll thank you this one. Oh, there is. You remember the big fire down Laguna Canyon about 10 years ago? Yeah. After the rain, this is what came up in the in the uh, Laguna Canyon area. Oh, and there normally are poppies there? Pardon me? Are there normally not poppies in that Laguna Canyon area? I don't know if there's well, we we haven't had a very wet season since that time. So, uh, I don't know if it's good. And if you look at it, you can see some of the charred stuff around it, say, from the fire. Oh, that's so, unique. So and uh, how nature recycles, you know, af after it burns. It's a rebirth like a phoenix. <laughs>